Welcome back to Civil Engineering Academy. This is Matt, and today we work a problem from the PE Civil exam from the Water Resources Breadth section. So let's dive in. A stormwater engineer is developing a large tract of open space in good condition into a large suburban neighborhood consisting of single-family homes on quarter-acre lots. Which of the following changes would you not expect in the watershed post-development? Assume HSG C soils. So in these problems, we can identify that it's coming from the hydrology section of the water resources portion of the exam. And I like to highlight what they're asking for in the problem. So they're asking for which of the following changes would you not expect in the watershed post-development. So not stands out to me as well as post-development. I underline those to keep us on track as we solve the problem. Next thing we need to review is HSG C soils. So HSG refers to hydrologic soil group, and there are four types of hydrologic soil groups, A, B, C, and D. And if we turn to the PE reference handbook, at the time of this recording, we're using version 1.1 of the PE reference handbook. We'll turn to section 6.5.2.2. And specifically, we're looking for the NRCS curve number chart. And in that chart, we see along the top are the four different types of HSG C soils, and each one has its own column. And then if we look along the side of it, we see the different land use conditions. So in the chart, we're going to look up the pre-development land use first, and that is open space in good condition using the HSG C soils and we see from the chart we get a curve number a pre-development curve number we'll call it equal to 74. Using the same technique but looking up the single family homes on quarter acre lots land use condition in the chart in the same HSG C soil type column we get a post development curve number equal to 83. And we know that a higher curve number is equal to a higher runoff. And so using this information, we'll evaluate each of our answer choices to determine the correct answer. Again, asking what they would not expect in the watershed post-development and keeping on track with that. So we know that higher curve number equals higher runoff and looking at answer choice A, it says an increased runoff volume. Well, that would be something that we would expect that's associated with higher runoff. So they're asking for what we would not expect so we can eliminate this answer because we would expect that. Using the same process of evaluation, we'll look at answer choice B an increased runoff rate. Again, we have higher runoff in the post-development watershed. Higher runoff would be associated with increased runoff rate. And they're asking us what we would not expect in the watershed. So eliminate answer choice B because that's something we would expect. Answer choice C is increased infiltration capacity. So infiltration, we know, refers to the amount of rainfall that soaks into the ground versus runs off. So if we have a higher runoff, we would expect decreased infiltration capacity. And answer choice C says increased infiltration capacity. So that could be potentially something that we would not expect in the watershed, which would be the correct answer. But before we make a final commitment to answer choice C, let's also look at answer choice D, which is decreased time of concentration. So time of concentration refers to the amount of time that it takes for sheet flow runoff to pond and pool together and begin to channelize and run off as channelized flow. So if you have higher runoff, we would expect to have a decreased time of concentration. The water will more quickly pond and begin to run off as channelized flow. So again, the problem is asking for what we would not expect. Answer choice D is something we would expect with higher runoff, so we'll eliminate that. And that leaves us with answer choice C 
as the correct answer, and we've successfully solved this problem. So if you haven't already, I invite you to check out civilengineeringacademy.com where you'll find more practice problems and our PE, civil, depth, and breadth review courses. And all of us at Civil Engineering Academy are happy to walk with you on your journey towards becoming a licensed PE and acing your exams. We'll see you there.